Good evening. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. What a pleasure it is to have you worship with us today. We'll be beginning a, a new theme today. I, I am the bread of life, that is Jesus. And we'll be focusing on spiritual food for those focused on earthly. You know, so often we get caught up in the things of this world, if it be things or food, satisfying our desires, our, our stomachs. But God tells us he gives us something that satisfies our souls. It is food that we need to eat, and that is his word. And we believe it through, through Jesus. So we ask God to bless our worship today, and we begin with our opening hymn. Please stand. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, for it is evening, and the day is almost done. Let your light scatter the darkness. Let it shine in our hearts and lives. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we have been bought back from sin, death, and hell by the perfect life and innocent death of Jesus Christ. In him we are forgiven. Let us rest in the peace until the rising of the sun when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus, as the heavenly bread of life. Grant us faith to feast on him in your word and sacraments that we may be nourished unto life everlasting through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We join us in the psalm.
Well, you got through it. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, I think. First reading, Exodus chapter 16, verses 15 to 31. In sending manna, a bread that st- stayed fresh for a short time, the Lord not only cared for Israel's physical well-being, but also fortified trust that God would continue to provide. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little, and when they measured it by the omer, The one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted, melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much, two omers for each person, and the leaders of the community came and reported this to Moses. He said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. To bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a day of Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day of the Sabbath there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. The people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 with selected verses. The Israelites had spiritual food in the wilderness. The pre-incarnate Christ was with them. Yet some cared more about physical blessings than spiritual ones. For I do do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened to them, an example, and were written down as warned for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The gospel acclamation, we join to say that. Alleluia. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Alleluia. The gospel reading for today is John chapter 6, verses 24 to 35. This will serve as our sermon text for today. Jesus is the bread of life. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the road side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, 
when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to, to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What signs then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace be yours from our Heavenly Father and our fellow brother Jesus, who gives us the food we need for our souls. When our souls are hungry, when they're needing food, he gives that to us and fills us full. Amen. Why is it such a tough question to answer? <laughs> Why do people fight over trying to come up with the answer for the question? The question is this. What should we have for dinner? You think to yourself, you know, what should we have? You first go to maybe your refrigerator or freezer and see what you have, and you try to figure out what do you want tonight? And then you have to figure out, okay, do I want something quick or slow? Do I want something frozen or not? And then you might just say, I don't want to cook at all. Let's just go out to eat, right? And then if it's by yourself, maybe the decision's easy. I'm just going here. But if you have someone else that you need to go with, you need to figure out, where do you want to go? And maybe one person is saying, I don't care where we go. I just want to eat. Just pick something. You know, and then you finally pick a place, and then you get to the restaurant, and what bothers me is that there's so many different options. Why can't you just do, give me four options and do it well? That way it makes it really easy on me, right? You know, we put so much thought and effort into what we're going to eat, what we're going to have, right? <laughs> but do we ever think about the spiritual food that we need to eat just as much? <laughs> Are we just as passionate about getting that food that we need for our souls to get it placed upon our spiritual plates? Today I, I want you to focus not on the food that satisfies the stomach, but rather I want you to focus on the food that satisfies the soul. Last week, we got to look at a, a glimpse of the, the feeding of the 5,000, and we looked at it kind of briefly from the perspective of the disciples. But today, I want you to look at it from the people that were sitting around Jesus in that crowd. You know, imagine you're sitting around Jesus all day. You've been following him. You've been watching him heal the sick and do miraculous things. You know, you've been listening to him teach the, these wonderful truths. And the day kept on going on, and you're, you start to hear your stomach grumbling. You, you start to feel hungry, and you're starting to think to yourself, okay, what are we going to do for this meal tonight? We really need to figure out what we're going to eat. 
You know, could we go to the nearest neighborhood? You know, would the restaurants still be open? You know, or would they have that kind of 15-minute rule? If you get there, you're just kind of glared at. Or are the seats going to be all filled because everybody's thinking the same thing? You know, how are we going to get this food? How are we going to feed all these people? You know, they're thinking kind of what the disciples were, most likely. But again, Jesus had a plan, did he not? Jesus had a plan the whole time to, to feed this crowd. And he, they, they find this boy with five loaves of, fit, of loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus breaks it and blesses it. And then the disciples start to pass it out. And maybe as the crowd, you're looking at this and you're like, this isn't much. You know, how is this going to fill me? Am I even going to get a bite? You know, is it going to be gone in the first kind of 20 people? And then all of a sudden, the disciples come to you and they give you some of this food. It feels somewhat like a wedding feast of sorts where you have, you know, those waiters and waitresses walking around at your table and making sure the plates are always full. You know, you're you're sitting there on the ground and there's always fish and bread upon your plate. You know, you you start to, you know, gorge yourself because there's so much food and it tastes wonderful. And maybe you even get to the point where you feel like, boy, I need to loosen my belt. And then on top of it, after everybody's had their fill, as much as they could eat, there was a bunch of leftovers. You know, again, how wonderful. They were satisfied. Now, we know that Jesus sent out his disciples upon the lake, and we heard that last week. But then we can kind of maybe focus more. Uh, Jesus kind of sending out the, the crowd, right? You know, they're all filled, and now they just need to find a place to spend the night. Maybe they had tents. Maybe they went to the city. Who knows? But then they, they, they left, and you could picture them, maybe the last few watching Jesus walk away up that mountain to pray. And so they fall asleep, and then they wake up, and maybe what was their, their first thoughts? We need to find this Jesus guy. You know, maybe he'll provide breakfast for us today. You know, maybe he'll provide a, a wonderful brunch that we, you know, we won't have to prepare, we won't have to pay for, you know, we'll be stuffed again. So they go looking for Jesus, right? And they try to look around where he should have been. The boat was still there. They knew he didn't leave with the disciples. They went off before him. But he was nowhere to go be found. And so they start making their way to a city of Capernaum. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? You know, they were not going to lose Jesus. They, they wanted to find him. They wanted to make sure that they could get their next meal. You know, before they went to bed, they wanted to make Jesus king. And do you think that overnight with a stuffed belly and all of that, that that sentiment had changed? Certainly not. You know, they still wanted to make him king. They still wanted to have a, a cushioned life where they didn't have to worry about any food, drought, or, or famine. But does Jesus tell them what happened? You know, Jesus, remember, he went up to the mountain. He prayed. And then in the morning, he went down the mountain, went on land, and then walked on the water. You know, he had the interaction with his disciples. The storm stopped. Does he tell them all of that? You know, how did you get here? That's how I got here? No, he doesn't answer the question. He doesn't even talk about it. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. You know, Jesus doesn't answer their question of how did you get here? Instead, we might be shocked by the tone Jesus has here. You know, it, it, it's scolding. You know, you're, you're just looking for me because I, I, I gave you food from those loaves of bread and fish. 
You're looking for me because I filled up your bellies. You know, I, I can give you something much more. I can fill up something that, that you need filling that really would fill you up. You know, essentially these people were degrading their lives simply to like flesh and blood. They were simply focusing on, on satisfying their human desires here on this earth and making things comfortable. But we know life is so much more than flesh and blood. God has made us in a complex way. Yes, we are flesh and blood, but we are also spirit. We are soul. And, and our bodies and souls need to be filled. And, and Jesus understood that. He was trying to tell the people that. That, yes, you may eat this, these loaves and these fish, but you're just going to be hungry again. You'll need to eat again over and over again. But I will give you something that fills you up, that nourishes you. But the crowd didn't understand what Jesus was saying. You know, they were still fixated on the food. Jesus, give us the food. That's what we want. You know, we hear <laughs> this. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works of God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So how do we earn this food from heaven? How, how do we get it? Well, we, we don't get it by silver or gold. We don't get it by our works. It's not something that we consume with our mouth. Again, they just didn't understand that. Again, they thought Jesus was talking about food. We hear Jesus say, so, or they asked him, What signs then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Again, in other words, how is this food going to look, Lord? You know, you said this food is going to come from heaven. Is it going to be like the manna that the Israelite people got? You know, will it be like the manna that fell from heaven and, and they were nour nourished by and they gathered it day in and day out besides the day of the Sabbath? You know, Lord, is the Lord of all heaven and earth going to provide for us in this way? You know, you see them. This earth, fill my belly. <laughs> you know, give me the food. But again, Jesus says that's not what he's giving. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my heavenly Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You know, it's really interesting how Jesus talks in this kind of hidden way. You might kind of say, Jesus, why don't you just blatantly tell them what you're talking about? They seem confused. But by faith and by carefully thinking about Jesus' words, we can understand what he's saying. You know, here's this bread that was given to the Israelites. They, they abused it. They didn't cherish it for what it was. You know, they, they, they said, you know, we detest this miserable food. But again, this, this bread comes from the Heavenly Father. It is a bread that, that comes down from heaven for the people that gives life, that gives salvation, right? You're probably already figuring out what the people are going to say next, right? If they're fixed on the food still, it's still going to continue. Sir, they said, always give us this bread, right? You're just kind of like, come on. No, shouldn't you get it by now? But Jesus turns kind of from being very subtle to being a lot more blunt. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus is this bread of life. Jesus is the one we consume. Jesus is the one who gives life and salvation. 
He is the one who satisfies the soul and fills it up. He is worth more than a loaf of bread. He is worth more than than a couple of fish. No, he is worth everything because he nourishes and sustains us in our, our souls. So the question is, after this conversation of talking about a bunch of food, are you hungry? <laughs> you know? Are, are, are you hungry for a meal? How are you going to eat? And, and I'm not talking about, you know, what you're going to have if you haven't eaten anything tonight yet, or what you're going to have for dinner tomorrow or the day after that. I'm not talking about where you might go out for dinner on Friday night. No. I'm talking about eating God's Word, consuming what, what you need. You know, if we realize it or not, our, our souls kind of warn us that we're hungry. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it often happens to me. I, I start hearing my stomach rumble right before dinner, and Elise is like, we're about to eat in like 10 minutes. And I'm like, I can't wait. So I have this bad practice of finding anything that's edible. First I go to the nuts, then I go to the chocolate chips, then I go to the potato chips, and then I eat pickles, and then I go to the cheese. It's a terrible meal. And then I'm just like, I'm full by the time the meal is put on the table. Uh, Wife isn't too happy. (laughs) But I'm just like, I need to satisfy my stomach. I can't wait. Maybe you've had these kind of hunger pains, right? Where you just need to eat. Don't our souls kind of tell us the same thing? I don't think we pay as close of attention to it because it doesn't, it feels different. You know, our hearts rumble and grumble. Our hearts ache. Isn't that our soul telling us, I need to eat I need something to nourish me. You know, feed me now. We have these pains and worries and concerns, and then we just ignore it like, oh, it'll go away, right? Uh, If I just don't think about it, I won't have have these thoughts. You know, if I just ignore my stomach, you know, I won't be hungry anymore. But then soon, maybe that works for a few minutes, and they're like, I'm starving. Our souls are the same way. They they need nourishment. They need food. You know, it's hard for us to sometimes fill up our our stomachs. Um, You know, we have so much food out there, and we can always eat whenever we want. But again, I don't know about you, but sometimes my day gets rolling, and I'm just like, you know, I just don't have time to eat, (laughs) you know? Or I'm just too busy, or I'm not thinking about it. I'm thinking about all these different things. And so, you know, I'm not eating or I'm not drinking water. You know, I've had some blood drawn uh, over the last couple of years. And the the nurses and doctors say, you know, Matt, you're you're dehydrated. (laughs) You need to drink more water. And I'm like, you know, there's all this water that I have at my disposal. I could drink it at any time. It's there. But it doesn't always taste good. You know, I I don't always want to walk upstairs from my office and go fill up my water bottle over and over again. You know, I just kind of ignore it. But I can't keep making excuses. You know, I, I need to eat my meals. I need to drink water because it's good for me. But again, you know, don't we handle God's word this way? It's there. It's there to eat. But, you know, I, I'm too busy. I got this going on. You know, I, I just don't have the time. You know, I, I have all these other things going on in my life. And we ignore the thing that our soul needs. It needs food. It needs God's Word. We need to eat it. Again, we, we make all these excuses of, you know, of why we don't, and then we end up malnourished and dehydrated spiritually. When God is saying, here's a wonderful meal for you, why aren't you eating? Why aren't you partaking in it? 
Isn't this why a, a church cares about the spiritual life of God's people? So that they don't wither away? <laughs> so that they don't perish and die? So that they don't rot in hell? No, this is why people of God care about other people and where they worship and who they're hearing God's word from because we want God's word to be nutritious and rich, right? Lord, have mercy on us when we have not cherished this meal the, the way we should or eaten it as frequently as we should if it be here at church or daily at home in our devotions and prayers. You know, we want people to eat their fill of God's word. We, we want people to savor every bite that they consume when they hear God's word in its truth and purity. You know, I, I am one of those people who likes food. <laughs> you know, I like cooking a lot with, uh, with Elise. You know, we try to come up with these fancy meals once in a while. But I also enjoy going out to eat. But I like going to places, maybe pastor's a little hoity-toity at times, and he likes going to the fancy places, places where he can't make the meal or doesn't have the time or the tools to make it. And so I, I enjoy going to these places and taking a lease with me, and we have this wonderful meal, and you just savor every bite because you just enjoy it. No, it isn't God's meal his word that way shouldn't we cherish it that way as like we're enjoying this five-star meal this michelin star chef who's made this wonderful meal as you read through the bible as you read through the books and the chapters and the verses it's a meal that has been designed just for you you know a, a, a five a 20 course meal that you can sit down at and enjoy. You know, and it's always a little bit different, and it satisfies your soul in just the right way that you need for that time and place. What a wonderful meal it is as you hear about Jesus who, who lived for you, died for your sins, the one who is the, the bread of life from heaven that gives eternal life to your soul that gives eternal life to you in, in heaven as a believer who believes in Jesus as your Savior. If your soul is grumbling, if it's hungry, feed it. Go to the pantry that is God's word. Pull out what he wants to give you that day. Meditate it, dwell on it, savor the taste. You know, meditate so that you can process it and say, wow, that was a wonderful meal. Again, Elise and I have experienced that just in life. You know, with, as you go to these different restaurants, we're like, hey, I remember that meal that we had like two years ago. But sometimes I hear from God's people, hey, pastor, I remember that sermon that you gave at someone's funeral. I remember that word you shared at me with me and my family and those I loved. You know, we cherish that word. You know, don't you often come out of church and say, boy, I feel full. <laughs> I feel good. Isn't it because you just heard the word of God and it nurtured and <laughs> nourished your soul? Right? This is what we want to hear. This is what is good. So if your soul is hungry, come and feed it. If you want a good meal, open up your Bibles. If you want something to savor, struggle with what Jesus says. You know, this crowd should have struggled with it. It should have chewed on it like a tough meat. But after it starts breaking down, you say, this is good. This is just what I needed. I am full. What a blessing it is that we can gather around for this wonderful meal and to eat it, to cherish it, to encourage each other to eat it as well. 
enjoy the places where you have this meal. If it be in church, by your bedside, at your kitchen table, it is good. It'll never rot. It'll never go bad. It'll always be fresh. It'll never grow dull. It is good and filling. Let's thank God for this wonderful meal that he gives us. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the meal you have prepared for us in your word. How sweet and delicious it is to our soul. Forgive us when we have ignored the hunger pains our soul is telling us. Thank you for not withholding the food we need, but filling us full to the brim. When we hear about the Savior who lived and died for us, let us never neglect our spiritual meals. Let us eat and drink of your word. Please use your spirit to satisfy our soul's hunger. Thank you, dear Lord, for spiritually providing what we need, food that will last eternally. You give us food that gives us eternal life with you. Dear Lord, thank you for inviting us to this table to eat this meal with our fellow believers. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which turns past all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue by confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, and Lord, we thank you for the wonderful meal that you give us through your word. Help us to cherish it. Help us to share it with others because you give us so much. Help us to share this wonderful meal so that others may cherish it as well and that your spirit may work through that meal, work through that word that is in their heart and that they hear. May we always cherish it, learn it, and continue to want more of it. And we long to be with you, the one who gives us this bread of life that is our Savior Jesus. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude with the closing hymn.
Good evening. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. Always a pleasure to worship with all of you. Uh, just remember to look in your mailbox for the information forms. If you haven't filled that out, please do. There's been a lot that have been sent back, and thank you very much for doing that. Um, if you, again, have photos as well that you could just send in, um, that would be helpful as well uh, so that we can use that. Uh, the church picnic will be coming up on September 8th, so that is also available uh, or that will be coming up. So if you want to help out in any way, just kind of be keep your ears open and uh, more information will be coming out. Uh, Sunday school, we're starting to figure out that stuff and always appreciate help with that. So if anyone is interested or wanting to help in any kind of way, uh, please contact myself or uh, Jason Yonke or Dan Kaminsky. Uh, they're more than happy to kind of help you out. Also, there is a mini golf outing this Sunday. Uh, it's a little bit of a late notice, but um, if you would like to join, you can join on Sunday. It's at 12 o'clock, I believe. There's a sign-up sheet. You can also, uh, pay, you're encouraged to pay there. Uh, I'm hoping to bring our two oldest boys and do that. So um, hopefully some of you are able to come as well. Um, the Ford and Christ magazines are available. Um, if you want to pick one up, uh, please do. They are free. They're just given out by the church. Uh, you don't need a subscription or anything. There is an article I quickly read here before church. It was, pretty, it was very well done. Uh, it's, please explain, is it true that God will never give us more than we can handle? And he kind of says that that f statement is often misused. <laughs> we might endure a lot of things that we cannot handle, but we trust in our Lord to get us through them. You know, he, it's not... Uh, sometimes when people use that phrase, they're putting the trust in themselves still. But even when we feel like we can't handle anything, you know, God is able to handle all things for us. So if you would like to have an article or read that article or have the magazine, um, please feel free to take a copy as well as the meditations on the other side. Uh, God's blessings on the rest of the week and we hope to see you next week.